Welcome to the STARS program, seniors taking active roles in society. And now, here's your host, Anita Finley. And it's uh, what we they say, sometimes we say our best show. <laughs> I don't want anybody, all the other people I interview feel that way. But Anthony is, you know, he's, he's good and he's here. And he, you know, even though he is one of the star real estate brokers in South Florida, uh, he always comes with other kinds of things to talk to us about. That's why I love him so much. He cares so about so many things. And one thing he cares about, of course, is viruses because he lives in a beautiful community in Balmer. And he just brought up some points to me on how people can get sick. So why don't we do that for a little bit? But then the biggest thing is uh, about people who are wanting to get into buying houses. Yeah. And well, the being, companies who call yeah. and say, we want to buy your house. Yeah. So we'll do that after, but let's just give a little, a few minutes of what you came up with, with um, all this virus. And do, you just told me about some things that I'm not careful about because I live in a condo and mm -hmm. I touch the elevator buttons, never think yeah. about it. Yeah. So, you know, everybody with the coronavirus, which they renamed, I don't, I don't know the new name, something 19. But, uh, you know, so everybody's scared to death about catching a cold, catching a flu and, you know, in South Florida, we have people come from all over the world. So it's a, you know, it's 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 not a, you know, they're they're safe in their fear, but uh, when you live in a condominium and say you're in a hundred unit building, you have a lot of people coming and going all the time, and uh, especially in January, people come down after Christmas, being around grandkids and family, and you know, up north you're in the house all the time, you're not outside as much, so it's easier to catch something. Uh, and then bring it down but once you're in your come down and people are in a condominium everybody's touching a lot of the same stuff the door coming into the lobby elevator buttons if your building has a gym you know everybody's in there using the gym and so uh, but they wipe things down well they'll take their towel and they'll wipe the towel down and then when they're on the treadmill they're not paying attention and they wipe their face with the towel which you know there's doctors that are probably cringing right now because most viruses you get through your eyes uh, nose or mouth so uh, you know that's the biggest thing do not touch your face and uh, you know you can ask your condo you know can you wipe the buttons down three times a day in the elevator can you wipe the handles down can you disinfect things sometimes they just wipe it down with regular soap well regular soap doesn't really kill a lot of viruses so but if they have uh, you know, a good antiviral um, soap or something like that, or they're wiping it down more often, you know, that's going to cut it, cut things down. I am very guilty of what you're talking about. I am so care careless. As a matter of fact, I get on the bicycle and I was waiting for this guy to get off. He said, just a minute. He went yeah. and he got and cleaned the bicycle off for me. Right. I never cleaned the bicycle yeah. off or before or after. Yeah. I mean, he was really good about that, but uh, you're great to do this, and I, I guess nowadays you have to really think about: is it a virus? You're going to get. Right. We don't don't talk about the one in China, but just the typical flu virus. So thank you. That's very yeah. smart of you to do that. Because and of course, get your flu shot in the fall. Oh, I, I got that, possible. and I just got my pneumonia shot. But let's talk even further: going into restaurants and what. How many were? One of the worst things to do is touch the magazines in a doctor's office. You pick, I never thought of you that. You pick the magazine up, look at it. It's four years old. And they're you know? sick already going Yeah, they're going coughing there. on it. They're coughing on their hands, and then they're touching the magazine. And what do we do? Paging through a magazine. We turn the page. We lick our finger, and then we turn the page <laughs> oh, of the magazine. You're making me very And upset. airplanes, too. Worst thing to do is touch the magazine. So you want everyone now to don't be crazy, but start to right. be, think about it. And years ago, I used to keep this spray in my my mm -hmm. purse i don't have that anymore maybe i should go back well that hand those. sanitizer hand isn't sanitizer. the best thing for you the best thing is to wash your hands and wash your hands thoroughly and when you're leaving the bathroom you just got done washing your hands you take a towel you dry your hands you throw it in the trash and then you touch the doorknob so you should do it with your, <laughs> your uh your if you can or, or, or open the door with the towel and then uh -huh. throw the towel yeah. the paper towel away well and open now, doors with your elbow yeah or because it's very hard to wipe right. your face with your elbow and uh, or with your foot, push and, the door open. And with your now foot. more and more, what they're doing is they have these dryers. You know that right. you don't have towels, which right. is very right. good. Well, thank you. At least what you've done is made us all alert. And yeah, that's one other important. thing in your home, a lot of people, including myself, I wake up in the morning, I'm congested, I don't feel well. 
you know, you need to open your windows in your house maybe once a week. If you can do it for a half hour, let a good wind go through. Because all of your upholstery, your couch, your mattresses, any clothing you bring in, plastics, cleaning products, they all have toxins in them. And plastics break down, and when they're breaking down, that's what they're letting out is toxins. So your, your, your home is just recirculating toxins through the air conditioning system over and over and over again, and it builds up. But if you can open the windows and let a good breeze come through for a half hour or so, it'll, it'll help get them out of the house, and you'll feel a little bit better. Because if you're getting the symptoms from the toxins can make you feel like you have the flu or a cold or something like that. And if you're, you don't leave the house often enough, you're not getting fresh air into your system. So it's one of the things you want to Funny, do. Funny, you know, I should send this, this program to my darling stepdaughter, who <laughs> is a, um, uh, she, she actually lives in Portland, Oregon. She's mm -hmm. like a vegan. She does all that stuff. And the first thing she wants to do to come to my house is open the windows. I said, yeah. you can't open the windows. you got to have fresh air. <laughs> not. So yeah. she would love you, right? Yeah. Oh, my heaven. That's really terrific. Okay. All right. Now, let's let the real estate hat go on your head yeah. and tell us what you would think that people should be doing and not doing. Well, someone came to me a couple weeks ago and they said, oh, I got this call from this company and they buy houses and they're going to give me cash and we're going to settle in 30 days. And, you know, what do you think about this? And I said, well, you know, if you're really strapped and you have to sell your house, then maybe that'll work for you. But here's some things to look out for. One, they want to buy your house at 70% or less than its value. That's how they make their money. Um, and they're going to promise you a lot. And some companies, they'll say, oh, we're going to pay cash for your home and it's going to settle in 30 days. And 30 days comes around and it doesn't settle and they keep putting you off and putting you off. In some cases, what they're doing is they're selling their contract. So they've offered you 70% of the value of your home, and then they're trying to sell it to somebody for 90%. So they're making 20% on the value of the of your home. You've you know you've been off the, off the market for 30, 60, 90 days, and uh, you know you just have to look out. Now there's certain groups that they look for, and you know the big one of the biggest groups is senior wait, citizens. Wait, wait, before you get, keep going, are these distressed houses or is this a regular no. house? Oh. No, what they're looking for, they're looking for houses that have little or no mortgage. They're looking for senior citizens. They are looking for some distressed houses, but they want to find a distressed house that um, has very little mortgage on it. Um, they, you know, they go after uneducated because they're saying, oh, this is what your house is worth. Well, when does a buyer ever tell a seller what their house is worth? <laughs> and... Uh, you know, oh, so, they do, but they're not. Yeah, but they're but not. They, getting, that's right. They're just yeah. trying to do it so they can get a good price, right? Yeah, they're not appraisers. I mean, you know, so you know, if if this should before you do this, you should check with your friends and family, and you know, see if you can do a refi or uh, a reverse mortgage. You know, something to get yourself out. Another thing you can see is maybe somebody will buy your house, a friend or family member, and then rent it back to you. Okay, wait, so before you go, I want everyone to know you're listening to Anthony Culp. You should call him, actually, even if if he just gives you the advice because he's very straight about everything. He's a South Florida's leading real estate agent, <laughs> and um, you can actually call him at 954-815-9048, correct? Yep. Okay, and so I just wanted you to know that's Anthony Culp. I get started too quickly on this. <laughs> so wipe your pencil down <laughs> yeah, that's and right. your paper, you know, and then write that number down. Okay, keep going. So you're, you've are you been in this business a long time, and this is kind of new. I don't think 20 years yeah. ago we had people like this buying no. houses that way, no. did we? They went to a traditional real estate agent. And what made the difference? Well, I think in the early 2000s with the housing market, you know, people were getting into the business and, you know, uh, a lot of uh, shows that you see on television of flipping houses, and, which I'm not a big fan of because usually their profit is what your loss. So they're buying your home at a lower price. They're putting money into it. And uh, say, you know, you're selling your house for 10 or 20 percent less than what its actual value is. Then they're making that 10 or 20 percent plus their money they're making off putting it into the home. So, so this is really different from going to a licensed real estate agent such as you are a broker right, right. and you are going to go through all the expensive costs to find a real true buyer, get the best price for the seller as compared to someone who is almost the buyer themselves, yeah. right? Well, you know, 
there are companies that are legitimate companies and they're coming in and they're offering you a more reasonable price. Sometimes people have to sell right away for whatever reason. Um, but excuse but, me, they could go to you and give you that price Well, too, you can call a you? realtor. Realtors are bound by a code of ethics. Realtors can lose their license and lose their livelihood. So my suggestion is call a local realtor and ask them for a CMA, which is a comparative market analysis. It's not an appraisal. Only appraisers can give an appraisal. And get an idea what your property is worth. Have them tell you, you know, these are the last homes similar to yours that have sold, and here's how long they were on the market. And, uh, you know, if you are thinking of going one, with one of these companies, then say to them, I want to hire an appraisal at your cost. Uh, because they're going to sit there and say, oh, well, we're going to buy your home and you're not going to have to pay a realtor's commission. And, you know, and some of them will entice you with vacations or, you know, they'll <laughs> say, oh, they'll no. oh, yeah, they'll say, uh, well, we'll help you find a place to move to. Or, you know, they'll say whatever they can because they're not bound by a code of ethics. This is just whoever. Uh, thinking that they're being clever. Wait, excuse me, don't they have to have a real estate license? Nope. Oh, no, no, no. Nope. Let's wait. Let's go yeah. back to this. You're telling me these are just, there's someone out there, they could be, uh, you know, have a cleaning company. They right. come in, no license? Well, they could. They could have a realtor representing them, but they're not, there's no listing agreement. So they're not representing you, they're representing the buyer. So uh, there's, I have a couple properties, and I get the calls every once in a while. And uh, they don't realize I'm a realtor because it doesn't say that in the tax record. So they'll go into everything. I, I want to hear what they have to say. I want to hear the local, uh, you know, for lack of a better term, scam. And then I'll say, well, how did you get my information? And, uh, you know, why did you pick me? And, uh, and usually I'm 55, so I'm in that age range where they're looking, and I don't own a lot on the properties, and uh, I have one on the market. And they'll go through the, um, the listings, and they'll see how long something's been on the market. If it's been on the market for a while, then they're calling that person. So if you have somebody whose property's been on the market, they're older, they're, if they're not well-educated, and there's not a big mortgage on their property, they're like the prime target for these companies because they're going to promise everything. They're going to tell you what your property's worth and say, well, we're going to give you full price for your property, but they're underestimating the value of your property and whether it's on accident or on purpose, uh, you know, who's, who's to say? We have uh, Scott Greenberg is watching you. I hope he's learning a lot from you. He's waving. <laughs> Hi, <funny>. Scott. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is a lot of new information because, you know, yeah. I have a real estate broker's license. I don't use it, but I... This is really new stuff. I don't remember reading about this in my last when I took yeah. my last, uh, you know, uh, review of my my um, of the information. This is very important that you bring this out. So let's go back to this. So if someone is being approached, they could always call you, um, and even if they don't want to list it with you, maybe yeah. maybe they don't for some reason, but they'd like some more information. They can call you, and as I said, this is Anthony Culp. And he is, as far as I'm concerned, the leading South Florida real estate agent. He'll go anywhere. You'll go to Miami. You'll go all the I'll way. Go up. to Miami if, if uh, if it's I something. I usually important. do Northern Dade, okay. and Southern Palm, and all of Broward. Oh, okay, good. That's great. Right. And so his number is nine five four, eight one five nine zero four eight. And you can get him actually on the web, and your web address. It's uh, isn't it uh, with rotation? What what is your web address? My uh, email address is oh. Anthony at real estate yeah. sofl dot com. Right, but you don't. And, but uh, you have a website. But that's I have not, a website, but I use it for adverta uh, oh, advertising okay. individual properties. Oh, okay, so but if you want to reach me, the best the best way to reach me is to read phone. Right. Well, if you need a quick answer for something, yeah, uh, call and me also by phone. please go pick up every month's Boomer Times. You'll see Anthony. He does a few things. He writes a very important article. The one that just came out, which was really interesting, it's in our February Valentine issue, and it was a uh, Senate Bill SB one one two eight. Yeah. What is that? There. Uh, <laughs> you want to talk about it, maybe? For well, they're they're uh, for Airbnb. Airbnb. I stay in Airbnb when I go away, and uh, what they're trying to do is the state will supersede any local laws. So if you're in, I don't want to target one city, but say you're in city ABC, and ABC says, we don't want single family homes to be Airbnb, and so we're not going to allow it. 
and uh, the state is is saying no we're gonna allow it if you own a single family home and the city says that you can't do Airbnb we're gonna supersede that and and I'm for and against this I'm for it in the sense that it's your property you should be able to do what you want now if you're in a homeowners association or a condominium forget it. this this it's doesn't not happen. yeah you right. agreed when you bought that property to abide by the rules right. and if those rules say no rentals then that's what you have to go by but if you're not if you're just in a city or a town and uh, you own a single family home and you want to do Airbnb you should be able to do it when you buy a home you get what's called a full bundle of rights and by doing that it gives you the right to do with your you know do what you want with your home now I also think it should be regulated you know you want to make sure that the uh, property is suitable for people to come and stay that you know you don't have great pictures online and then they get there and the mattress is old and nothing works and stuff like that so I think it needs to be regulated and maybe in that town it most likely is going to be you know reviewing the property and inspecting it uh, maybe they should get a little piece of that rental to pay for the expense that they have of having to go and check on these properties from time to time and also you know if you have a property and you're doing Airbnb and, and you know you have people out there jumping in the pool at 12 o'clock at night and you know the neighbor you're you're infringing on the neighbors uh, quiet enjoyment of their property so there has to be some sort of quick response to that uh, instead of saying well you're gonna have to take them to court or you know so it's you know Airbnb is relatively new and it's still uh, growing and there's growing pains like anything else and things need to be figured out but I don't think that somebody should lose the right to be able to rent their property and for senior citizens this is great if you want to stay in your home but you need some money and you can rent part of your home or um, you know you should be able to do that and I also think it'll help the housing crisis that we have in South Florida because an Airbnb isn't always just a few nights. Sometimes it could be for months. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought Absolutely. Airbnb is, is just like a motel. They come in and out. No, you have people who come to South Florida. They're going to be working here for three months. They don't want to stay in a hotel room. They'd like to have a kitchen. And, you know, they don't want to go through a lobby. They want to feel at home while they're here. And uh, Airbnb does that. So what is the difference then of a bed and breakfast? Well, bed and breakfast is, uh, you know, you're there for a week. You know a few days or a week and uh you know most people are it's it's a house with multiple bedrooms and maybe they give you a little breakfast in the morning and right. stuff like that but is that controlled oh uh, well, yeah i mean everything is controlled one way or another right. you know you have to get a license and there are inspections when you originally set it up uh a um uh, bed and breakfast is a, is a little more a little more licensing to it and, and more inspections because you have a lot of people living in one house so um, you know it's 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 controlled. I just a little stayed bit in one as, on a, one of my press trips and it was fantastic and yeah. it was a lovely thing to do but sure and it was in the middle of a residential neighborhood. Mm -hmm. uh, I have other friends, the people that write the celebrity column in Boomer Times. And they have a historic house, Magnolia House, on Staten Island, uh -huh. really historic. Mm -hmm. And they have people who, for Airbnb, they're very distinguished people come right. from all over the world. Now, uh, a bed and breakfast, you may not be able to do in a residential area because that's a business. It's, mm. it's more of a business and a commercial business, and it may be limited to zoning. And, you know, they might not be able to uh, do it anywhere, just in certain parts of the town or city. I see. Okay, well, that, that covers that kind of thing, but let's go back to what we started with with the sellers. So um, for I do see lots of ads everywhere on this flipping houses stuff. It, it's, it, they have this cute little thing they're doing on television now about flipping houses. There are people, do you know that there are courses on flipping houses? Right. You know right. about that. Yep. That if you want to earn money, you want to learn how to flip houses. This is going to be from mm -hmm. anybody. I, I was really amazed about that. I almost wanted right. to go to one to see what they do. Yeah. What, what, so uh, they're teaching you, know, you how to... I would tell people, leave it up to the professionals. You know, you'll see where they'll say, oh, you can buy it on the uh, foreclosure on the courthouse steps. Um, in one of my continuing education classes, there was a woman there, and they were professionals. And they bought a house for $360,000. And when the house was fixed up, it was going to be about 550000 So they bought it on the courthouse steps. And, uh, you know, you don't get your deed isn't as valid or as good as buying it from somebody else. 
So they put about fifty thousand dollars in it when all of a sudden they were getting notices that was there were other liens on the property <laughs> that no one found. The liens were so high they had to walk away from the property. Oh so my So they goodness. ended up this property ended up going back into foreclosure again and uh, they lost quite a bit well, of money. It's a very good point that you bring up that when you do buy a house, you better make sure that that title has been totally covered, right? Yeah, and sometimes, you know, it's just you just don't see it. It wasn't filed in time or there was a mistake and, you know. Well, that's <laughs> when you do things on your own. But when they deal with someone like you, you're going to make sure everything is when, done. When you're buying something on the courthouse steps, you're, you're, I'm not representing you. <laughs> I'm not, you know, it's not It's not the kind of business that I do. It's It's... Really, it's up to the professionals. A, a professional who who buys property on the courthouse steps, they take that risk into consideration. And they're not just doing a property a year. They're not putting all their savings into it. They're a business. And, you know, with any business, you, you if you're a good business, you consider, okay, I'm going to lose on one of these, uh, uh, whether it's carrying costs or you just underestimated the value or the, that maybe that market went down. But for the person who thinks they're going to, you know, get rich quick, you know, and it's uh, it's not worth the risk. Well, one thing though, you do do every month, you do feature a particular property yeah. that you have, mm -hmm. and um, you do get some very nice properties. I see the inside, and the prices are very reasonable. I am yeah. amazed at what you're able yeah. to get. Yeah. Well, if you're looking up by the ocean, you're going to pay more for less. Um, and if you're somebody who likes to go to the beach all the time, and that's great, live up by the ocean. But if you're somebody who likes to entertain or your family's going to come stay with you, then you want a little bit of a larger place. And, uh, and you do have views. You do show some of the oh, yeah. buildings with views. So I sell a lot of property in Palm Air, which is in Pompano. It's on three golf courses. and all, you know, A two-bedroom unit is almost 1,200 square feet. And with That's a, a screen balcony or an That's enclosed balcony, yeah, and a completely renovated two-bedroom condo. I just sold one the other day. Uh, is runs around two hundred thirty thousand dollars, which they feel like a home. The one thing about Palm Air, the units are so large. When you walk in, it doesn't feel like some place you're going to stay for a while, but it actually feels like a home. You make a home there. You plan on living there for a while, and you live there. I live there as well, too. And you live there for a long time. I've been there about five years now. Uh huh. And um, so, did you, when when you were thinking about it, why did you tell us why you went to Palm Air? You well, could have gone anywhere. Some of the great things about Palm Air is we don't own the roads. The city owns the roads and the streetlights. So, and they our roads are beautiful. They're always you know very well taken care of. Uh, there's security. We you know there's 17 different associations there, and each association has you know security whether it's 24 hours or dawn to dusk or however it is it's so lush when you pull it when i drive you know i'm driving up power line or atlantic and i'm you know there's no trees and as soon as you pull into palm air there's trees and there's paths and you see people walking and walking dogs and exercising and it's just you know i just exhale once i get in there <laughs> and then all of the units or vast majority of the units look out over a golf course now, people living in Boca, who uh, most houses or condos where you're on a golf course, you pay to become a member of that club when you have mandatory fees or an equity fee moving in or annual equity fees. In Palm Air, we don't. The golf course is owned by somebody else, but we get to look out over a beautiful golf course and uh, you know there's no cost in your condo fee or when you purchase. And we're really lucky. It's it's a great place to live. Yeah, and you do so. That you're Mr. Uh, Mr. Palmer, yeah, aren't you? In they a call way. me the King of Palmer. Yeah, right. Are the, <laughs> I'm sure there are other brokers there, but you yeah. live there. You've been there. You know you're you're so smart anyway. So yeah. I think that's great. But as as you said, you will sell and buy property yeah. for people. Yeah. You know, I have several uh, listings right now in um, Call Rich Country Club. You know, I do duplexes, commercial properties. I just sold a triplex the other day. Who. He was buying it. Triplex, so that's yeah. a good business thing to do. Well, Anthony, as usual, every time you come on, I just love it. You, you give yeah. expert advice on so many real estate topics, yeah. and today we gave it on health. Yeah, we yeah. were supposed to talk about two things. We always get yeah. sidetracked. I know, but you did. You <laughs> yeah. talked about two things, right? Yeah, yeah we and got the important ones. In. Yeah, no, you Everything did. Everything was important. Yeah, you did great, and of course we both have dogs that we love who are yeah. a little sick, but we... we 
you know, when you love something like that, it doesn't matter. But thank you very much for coming on and spending your Saturday morning with oh, us. I enjoy and we'll it. see you the next time. Thank you. Thanks for having we'll me. We'll be back another time.